Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today, we're going to show you how to get Sega Model 2 games up and running in LaunchBox and Big Box using a standalone emulator known as the M2 emulator. This is actually a pretty simple process. I'm going to walk you through everything here, but by the end, you should be able to have these Sega Model 2 games up and running in your LaunchBox or Big Box setup, and they're definitely worth adding. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Sega Model 2 set up with LaunchBox and Big Box. And when it comes down to it, this is actually a pretty simple process once you get the hang of it. But up front, there are a few things we're going to need. First up, we're going to need a separated Sega Model 2 ROM set. You can actually get these directly from your own main set. It can be merged, non-merged, or split. You can go ahead and extract them. I've got all of mine in a folder called Sega Model 2. Now it's on my desktop right now, but we're going to go ahead and move this in just a second. And one of the main issues that a lot of people run into when trying to run Sega Model 2 games with whatever emulator you want to use for Sega Model 2 is that each one of these ROMs here actually contains different regions and this can cause a lot of issues for some people and I'm going to walk you through the process on getting the correct region set up once we get everything imported and ready to go. But first and foremost, you're definitely going to need a Sega Model 2 ROM set to get these games running. Next thing we're going to need is an emulator, and for this one we're going to be using the M2 emulator. I'll leave a link in the description on where we can get this. You can download it right here, Sega Model 2 emulator, and it's version 1.1a as I'm making this video. So I've already got my emulator here on my desktop, I've also got my separated Model 2 ROMs right here. And personally, I like to keep my LaunchBox and Big Box set up as portable as possible, so I'm going to go over to my LaunchBox install directory, I'm going to find my games folder, and I'm going to place this folder with all of my ROMs in it right there in the games folder. And it's named Sega Model 2. That way, we got them there and they're ready to go. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and extract the emulator. We're also going to move this, but I'm just going to extract it right here. So inside of here, you're going to see scripts, our emulator exe, and our emulator.ini. This is very important. But again, just like those games, I want to keep everything portable. So I'm going to place this folder we just extracted in my emulators folder. So we'll go launchbox emulators. And you can actually rename this whatever you want, but when you download it, it's going to be named 1.1a. I'm just going to leave it just like that. Before we move over to LaunchBox, there is a little bit of setup we need to do inside of the emulator. So we're going to head over to the folder we just transferred over. We're going to find our emulator.ini. And we need to add our ROM directory inside of this INI. If you go ahead and read through this, it actually tells you exactly what to do. But, uh... Since mine are located in my LaunchBox, Games, Sega Model 2 folder, this is exactly what I'm going to be adding. And to do this, I can just open the folder up, and I can copy my directory directly from here. So we're going to go ahead and copy, and we're just going to paste that right here, where it says Directory 1. So this is my D drive, LaunchBox, Games, Sega Model 2. This is where all of my Model 2 games are going to be located. And another thing to be sure of is just uncomment this directory here. So we're going to delete this. That way the emulator knows exactly where our games are located. We're going to choose File, Save, and we can go ahead and close out of this. Now it's time to head over to LaunchBox. We need to set up the emulator and then we're going to import our games. So from Tools, we're going to go to Manage, Emulators, and we're going to add a new emulator. For the emulator name, we can use the drop down or you can type it out, but we're going to be using the Sega Model 2 emulator. And since we've already got this set up, we don't have to mess around with the associated platforms or the running script to easily allow us to exit this emulator. But what we need to do is find our application path, and this is going to be the emulator we just placed inside of our LaunchBox Emulators folder. Browse, LaunchBox, Emulators, 1.1a, emulator.exe. We'll choose OK, and we can close. And now we've got the emulator added to LaunchBox and BigBox. It's now time to import our games. Tools, Import. ROM files. I'm going to choose Add Folder. Now I'm going to navigate to where I place my games. Sega Model 2. Select Folder. 
We'll choose Next. Platform should automatically be selected for us, along with the emulator, the one we just added. Since my games are already in my LaunchBox directory, I'm just going to use the files where they're currently located. I definitely want to search for game information and local metadata. We're also going to download as much artwork as possible for these games. And this is where the import process gets a bit interesting. So we want to force using main metadata. We also want to select Force Importing Duplicate Games. Now this is just in case you've already imported these games with your MAME import. Once we force that, we're going to get some MAME options here. We want to import all clones. We do not want to skip any games, so we're going to check None. And we do not want to create a playlist. So all clones, no skips, no playlists. Choose Next, Finish and now it's going to import our Sega Model 2 games. And once the import is complete, we're now going to have a new section over on the left-hand side known as Sega Model 2. We can go ahead and start up a game, so we're just going to double-click on Daytona USA, and it's definitely going to give us a warning the first time we start this game up. As you can see, we're kind of in the debug menu. No network board is present, but we can fix this pretty easily. And another thing to note is, we're not going to go full screen at first. If you need to, we've got the full screen resolution and auto switch to full screen. So once we get this set up, we're definitely going to enable that auto switch to full screen. So every time we start a game up, it'll go full screen for us. But since the game isn't working right now, what we're going to do is grab our keyboard. We're going to press F2. This is going to bring us to the service menu. And to navigate the service menu, we're going to press F1. As you can see, it'll scroll through for us. We're going to go to Game System. And to select, we're going to press F2 once again. F1 to navigate. Link ID. We're going to change this from Master to Single. Move down to Cabinet with F1. We're going to change this from Twin to Deluxe. Country is auto set to Japan. Now this is where a lot of people have issues, so we want to set this to USA. We're going to use F1 to exit, all the way back down to exit again, F2, and we exited test mode. Now the game's going to start for us. And there you have it, we've now got Sega Model 2 games running with this emulator. Obviously, we're not in full screen, so uh, we can do a little more setup here with full screen and controller setup. So now that we've got the game running, we can enable auto switch to full screen, so next time we start this game up, it's going to go full screen for us. And we're also going to want to configure our controller or keyboard. So from game, we've got our controller configuration, very self-explanatory, you're just going to double click on an option, Press the corresponding button on either your keyboard or your controller. I'm going to go ahead and exit this one. And since we set up that running script, it'll bring us right back into LaunchBox. We'll do... Let's go with the House of the Dead. I'll actually show you how to recalibrate your uh, gun cursor. This is an issue that some people run into, but it's actually pretty easy to recalibrate this. From our keyboard, we're going to press F2. Remember, we can get into the settings menu from here. We're going to use F1 to navigate this menu. We want to go all the way down to Gun Settings, F2 for Select, Player 1 Gun Adjustments, and you know, you're going to do the same thing for Player 2 if you need to adjust that one. We'll enter this menu and just follow the on-screen prompts. Really easy to do. We'll just line these up, give it a second, and it's going to recalibrate everything for us. And there you have it. We're now recalibrated. We can get right back into the game, start playing House of the Dead with the calibrated cursor. Like I mentioned, a lot of people do run into this issue. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope you get Sega Model 2 up and running in your launch box system. Definitely worth adding. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.